So when it comes to video game prices, I don't look up the prices as often as you'd think. I kind of have amassed a pretty large collection over the past, I don't know, 20 years? I don't know. I've been seriously collecting since the, I'd say, early 2000s. So like 2002, 2003, like right around when the GameCube era was, I started collecting all my old stuff again. The N64 stuff that I already had, the GameCube stuff that I was buying at that time, and then later PS2. And I don't know, I was grabbing like Super NES, NES, all that stuff, and even Genesis. So I had a pretty decent collection throughout the 2000s, but one system that I was collecting for quite a bit was the PS1. Now, I'm the type of collector where I don't buy everything. I buy stuff that I'm legit interested in, and then I try it out. If I don't like it, I sell it, in all honesty. So, I try to keep my collection very thin and trim, so to speak, despite the fact that I have a lot of games. But, today, we're going to take a look at a list of games that uh, are for the PlayStation 1 that are my top 10 most expensive. This video was kind of inspired by my buddy LT Showcase or Lucius Showcase. Go check out his channel. I'll put the link down below for the video in question, which was top five most expensive PS1 games. And I've done these types of videos before, but it's been a really long time since I've done one. I think a couple years. I meant to respond to Nefarious Wes's Genesis video, which maybe I'll still do. But uh, I put this one up to Twitter. I was like, hey, what do you guys want to see as far as like a, a most expensive list of games that I have? And it was like neck and neck with Genesis and PS1 and people chose PS1. So we're doing it. This is it. This is the top 10. I wanted to do something a little different than what uh, Lucius did. So we're doing 10. 10 games. Now, keep in mind, all of these prices are based on current prices as of uh, late April of 2021 and all prices are based on complete in box. The reason for that is I don't collect loose PlayStation games. So everything has to have a box. That's just the way it is. As far as manuals go, if it's a common game that I think I can get a manual for, I'm okay with buying a game like without a manual, but in all in almost all circumstances, I think I only own one loose PlayStation 1 game and that is cuz it accidentally came with a PS1 that I bought and that is uh, Mortal Kombat mythology sub-zero so yeah it was like in the in the system when i bought it and i the guy didn't even know so i was like you want this back no okay all right well understandable so today we're going to take a look at 10 games here we go we're going to start off with uh we're going to count down from 10 to 1 so 10 being the lowest in price and one being the most expensive the prices are going to be based on a scale so I'm not gonna be like, you know, 125.49. I'm gonna be like, hey, it's between this price and this price on average. Uh, and that's based on probably the past six months worth of looking at everything. So here we go. First up is Thunder Force 5. This is a shmup or shooter or shmup dango, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, the reason I think why this one is so expensive is because of this little logo right here, working designs. That had a pretty low print. Uh, so the cool thing about this game is that it has gold foil writing on the back and on the front the Thunder Force 5 logo is kind of like hologram foil. It's cool. It's definitely cool. I've played this one. It's fun. I'm terrible at this game though. Like I am awful. It's fun and it's got great music so highly recommended. Uh, here's the thing though. Uh, oh in the manual too actually. Take a look at the back of the manual. It's, uh, it's got that same foil look to it. It's really cool. I mean, working designs always went all out, and you'll see based on the, uh, the title card, the thumbnail, if you saw it, uh, I definitely am a, a fan of working designs. So, this game, I happen to have a receipt for when I bought it. Uh, so I paid, let's see, this is, uh, bought it in 2014, based on that right there. And I paid $13.77 for it. $13.77. How much is it going for? I have a neat little list right here. So, 
Thunder Force 5 is currently going between $70 and $90. So that was 2014, so what, seven years? Whew, that's a pretty big markup over a seven year time period, but it is what it is, I guess. Now next up on this list for number nine is kind of a funny situation because I looked up some games and uh, it came boiled down to these two games, Dino Crisis 2 and Skull Monkeys. The problem is that Skull Monkeys complete in box kind of gets edged out by Dino Crisis 2 just by a little bit. So unfortunately this one is, uh, is, I'd love to talk about this one more. It is a really cool game, definitely check it out. Uh, but the only thing I'll say about this one is my version is the one that has the hologram 3D kind of cover on it. You can't really see it, but uh, it's got like uh, one of those, they did this with a couple games like Crash Bandicoot 2. Uh, they had like a hologram kind of 3D cover so that when you move it, it does like different things with the cover. So pretty neat. Anyways, so that's Skull Monkeys. But Dino Crisis 2, starring our good friend Regina, this game is uh, one that I picked up right around that same time. Like, I, like 2014, 2015, right around that time was when I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try to pick up as many PS1 games as I can that are really weird and obscure. I got stuff like Trap Gunner and just like really weird games that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna check these out, who knows. And so this game, Dino Crisis 2, I don't have a receipt for it, unfortunately. But the price on this one goes between 80 and $120. For Dino Crisis 2, really? I don't know. I mean, it's cool that it's worth that, I guess. Next up on the list, we have Brave Fencer Musashi. This is a uh, Squaresoft action RPG kind of game. And uh, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't spent that much time with this one. Uh, I've had it for years. I've had it for a really long time. And one of the reasons I picked it up is because my buddy Brian, who you may have seen in some of my reviews, he would play Dracula in all the Castlevania reviews. He, uh, he was my manager in the uh, Silent Bomber review. So Brian's a good buddy of mine, and he suggested Brave Fencer Musashi, and uh, he said it's one of his favorite games of all time. So I figured at that time, you know what? I'll, uh, I'll pick it up. I, I found it for cheap, so sure, why not? And uh, this one has, not only do I have a receipt for it, which it's a game crazy receipt, that's how old it is. Uh, this one comes with a demo disc. And uh, the demo on it, I, I can't remember what the demos are, but uh, oh, it says includes Final Fantasy VIII demo disc. So pretty neat. Uh, this game is, uh, it's, it's, it's fun if I, re if I recall correctly, but I, I just, I would like to spend more time with this one eventually. But yeah, it's uh, a one disc game in a two disc case, mostly for that demo. I don't know if they ever put out a single disc version of it, I'm not sure. But my version is actually in really, really phenomenal shape. The manual's cover has a slight, like, kind of fold to it a little bit, but uh, it's it's in pretty good shape. So Brave Friends of Musashi, I paid, according to this, I bought this in 2004. 2004. And I paid $11.01 for it. So how much is it going for now? Let's take a look. $79.125 between those two prices. I mean, it's square, so of course it's going to be an expensive game. I just, I don't know. I, these prices are just kind of crazy for games that uh, I guess are 20 years old, but at the same time, like, PS1 has been jumping up for a while now, so it's no surprise. If you are just starting to collect PS1 now, uh, I don't necessarily know if I'd recommend starting. I would maybe suggest, you know, getting the ROMs, the ISOs. Uh, I don't know, but uh, there's still some pretty decently priced stuff that's out there, but uh, games like this, not so much. Next up, we have Silent Bomber. This game I reviewed, and I've spent a lot of in-depth time with this one. Definitely go check it out. I will link somewhere on here or down below. Silent Bomber is a Bandai game. Uh, I think this is before they merged with Namco. 
and it is uh, kind of like, I don't know, well, go watch my review. It's an action game, but you know, you'll find out more about it and how it was kind of inspired by Metal Gear Solid, but I don't know. It's like Bandai tried to make their own Metal Gear Solid, basically. <sighs> okay, but uh, Silent Bomber, it's, uh, it's a neat little game. It's definitely a, a, a talking point kind of a game, but I, I picked this one up for like, I want to say between 25 and 30 bucks uh, shortly before I reviewed it. It was one of those games I was like, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to review it right off the bat. And I did. And uh, so this game goes for, according to price charting, $120.150. I remember getting this game cheaper than what it cost at that time. I remember looking up the price for it and it was like maybe 40, 50, 60 bucks, something like that. And even then I was like, ooh, I've just found a steal. Like, awesome. I, you know, I've got a good deal. But guys, don't pay 120 for this. It's not, it's, it's okay. It's not worth 120 in my opinion. I would pay no more than 50 for this, but that's just me. Next up, we have a game that I love. I love this game, and uh, it's one of my favorite RPGs ever, and that is Lunar Silver Star Story Complete, and it is complete. And uh, you guys may also notice, hey oh, the uh, poster is on my wall because I mailed away for it in uh, the strategy guide. So what does this one come with? Well, besides an, an absolutely gorgeous box. I mean, look at this. They even put Velcro with, like, foil. I mean, working designs really went all out on these Lunar games. So what does it come with? Well, it comes with a book, hardcover, foil, or glossy foil, whatever. And in this book, in this manual, it's got uh, interviews with the staff that made the game. It's got the cast of characters. It's even got a mini strategy guide walkthrough in the back. Pretty cool. Doesn't cover the whole game, just like maybe the first few hours, I think. Uh, in the game itself, which is a two, it's a two disc game regarding the game itself, but uh, it also, oh yeah, it comes with a map, a cloth map, which is pretty neat. Uh, it comes with the soundtrack as well. And, comes with a making of disc as well. Really cool. I mean, working designs are just, they were, man, I miss working designs. They really knew how to put out a game as far as like collections go. They really wanted their games to be like special when it came, came to the release. This one I don't have a receipt for, but I remember paying probably between 40 to $45 for it. And even then that was a good deal because I think this one was going for probably about 60 or so. And so I lucked out, I found it at a convention and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna pick this up. So uh, what's this one going for now? Let's check the list. It is going for between 120 and $180, which I get because of the fact that, you know, it's got that whole collector's purpose to find this complete in box in this condition. Uh, you know, the box is in pretty good shape aside from like the top here, which has, you know, just like a little bit of a mess, mess, it's a little messed up, but I bought it like that. So I think I got a good price for it. And especially compared to these prices, 120 to 180, I don't know if I could justify that, especially not now, but I don't know. It's still a great game. You should definitely play this one. Now, Oh, surprise, another working designs game. Number five on my list is Alundra. Now, the crazy thing about Alundra, aside from the fact that it has, again, like a Hoyle, oh, yeah, Hoyle, H hologram foil kind of cover uh, on the inside. The manual has embossed stuff on it too, which is really cool. And it comes with a paper poster. I guess they didn't go all out for this one. Comes with a paper like map of the land. I have a receipt for this one so we'll showcase that in just a second. Uh, you know PlayStation did this weird thing with these double discs uh, where like a lot of games shipped with like this flat thing 
with no second game inside. I don't know why they did that. Um, but what's really neat about this one is the discs all came in different like types. Uh, if you watched my new prepare for getting uh, like uh, ink off of discs, I did one about that and I got the ink off of this disc. Uh, check out that video, link will be down below or up here. So yeah, they, they printed multiple different types of discs for this one. Uh, so I would imagine that the price difference for a Lundra is probably based on which one was the most rare. I don't know which one was the most rare, I was just stoked to get this complete. So, how much did I pay? Well, let's see. Uh, I bought this in 2016 and I paid $29.95. 2016, $29.95. Which uh, was a pretty good deal for this game back then. How much is it going for now? Let's find out. $140 and $160. Ah, uh, whew. Yikes. Uh, I, I mean, I haven't played this one. This is one on my list. I've been wanting to hunt down a strategy guide for it so I can start it, but yeah, 140 to 160. That's pretty high. I didn't expect it to be that much, but that's how it goes. Number four is another working designs game. Lunar 2, Eternal Blue, Electric Boogaloo, complete. It is in really, really phenomenal shape aside from the ding in the corner here and this box part is a little dented up too but oh my goodness this is just like the lunar one as far as the box goes they included the the open up velcro let's uh let's pop this bad boy open and see what they give you in this one in the sequel so what you get inside you get a soundtrack which is uh <laughs> it's weird. Warning, this storage area is provided for the demo of Lunar 2 that was included with Vanguard Bandits. So if you have the demo for the game, you can complete the full thing and put it in there. I don't have the demo because I don't have Vanguard Bandits. So, yeah. If anybody has a loose Vanguard Bandits uh, de uh, demo disc for Lunar 2, let me know. <laughs> so, yeah. Soundtrack in this. That's such a weird thing. Uh, this is a... Uh, L2 Omake box, which comes with it, and in that you get another map. This one is a cloth map, as well as uh, these little figures, I guess, that you can make. I don't really know what this is, what Omake is. So, we hope you enjoy the items we've included in this Omake box. Omake, oh, is the Japanese word for extra or bonus. This box is our... Thanks to you for local support and joy, or loyal support and joy. So just like, again, Lunar, uh, working designs went above and beyond. Uh, another cool manual. And again, I was blown away at how good of shape this was in for the price that I paid for it. So cool stuff. The game itself, boom, double disc, and I don't know if I have a receipt for this one. I remember getting it for an amazing price, but yeah, disc one, disc two, disc three, and then of. So that's what they include. So this one had more content as far as the discs go. This I paid, I want to say 60. It wasn't more than 60. And this is when it was, this is actually fairly recently. I think I bought this maybe two years ago or a year ago. So I can't believe I found it for that price. What's it going for? Currently, 150 to $202. <sighs> I mean, I get it. Again, working signs. They went all out, man. I totally understand. Number three on my list is kind of a cheat in a way, sort of, I'll explain. Castlevania Symphony of the Night, one of the best games of all time, one of my favorite games of all time. So, this is the original version, but the disc is Greatest Hits. And what's funny is, Lucius did his video and did the same thing, but reverse. 
he has the greatest hits cover and the original disc. So Lucius, I think we should do a trade, man. What do you say? Hook me up. I'll hook you up. You know what I'm saying? Because otherwise, we both have incomplete versions of this. And I gotta wonder how many other people have that, where like they have the greatest hits, but they have the original disc. That's gotta be a pretty common thing. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything like that. Anyways, this game is going for between $150 and $220. Man, I mean, I love me some Symphony of the Night, but that's just, that's just bonkers. I don't know. This one technically is going to rival this one, which is my other, this three and two can kind of go back and forth because they're identical in price almost. Uh, this was 150 to 200. So technically this would be number three, but Castlevania Chronicles is the next one on my list. Again, complete. I bought this when I started collecting all the Castlevania games back in like 2000, I don't know, five, I think is when I really started to collect them. I paid about, I want to say 25 to 30 at the time. When this released, it released for 20 bucks, if you can believe it. It was like a budget game, so to speak. This is the game that is basically this game, which is Akamasha Dracula X68000, playable on the Sharp X68000. Why I own this? Because I'm an insane Castlevania collector. I don't have a Sharp X68000, but if I wanted to play it, I would play it on this version. You can get this on the PS1 or P, uh, P, the PS3 store, and I think maybe the PS4 store as part of like a PS1 Classics, and you could pay like 10 bucks for it, I think, which is about what I would pay for it if I was gonna, you know, get it digitally. But if you want the complete in box, it's 150 to 200 bucks, like crazy. The final listing for number one most expensive game on the PS1 in my collection, Valkyrie Profile. I remember playing this in college and uh, it was cool. Actually, I didn't play it. A friend of mine, I watched him play it because he had picked it up and this was like probably 2003, 2004. I don't think I have a receipt. Oh, I do have a receipt for it. Ooh, this will be fun. All right, so this game is in great shape. I picked this one up when uh, I was at a game store, a local game store, and I think I may have done some trading credit for it. I gotta look but it is in top-notch shape. Complete in box, very hard to find Enix JRPG. What did I pay for it? Boy, this receipt is really faded. 2011, I traded in some stuff, but I paid 64.95, if you can look right, right there. $64.95, yeah, and that's crazy. Now, what's it worth? Which really is subjective. What's anything worth? $325 to $500 for Valkyrie Profile? You could just get the PSP version, Valkyrie Profile Lenneth. Why bother going for this version? I don't know. That's it guys, that's my list of the top 10 games. Do you own any of these? What are your thoughts on this list? What are your thoughts on the PS1 collecting? It's kind of insane right now. Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more on the channel. I'm sure we'll have another list. Maybe I'll do the Genesis list, who knows? Let me know if you wanna see that Genesis list down below.